October 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapter 49 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke about the Ammonites. Do you think there are not any people of the nation of Israel remaining? Do you think there are not any of them remaining to reinherit their land? Is that why you people who worship the god Milcom have taken possession of the territory of Gad and live in his cities? Because you did that, I the Lord affirm that a time is coming when I will make Reba, the capital city of Ammon, hear the sound of the battle cry. It will become a mound covered with ruins. Its villages will be burned to the ground. Then Israel will take back its land from those who took their land from them. I, the Lord, affirm it. Wail, you people in Heshbon, because I and Ammon is destroyed. Cry out in anguish, you people in the villages surrounding Rabbah. Put on sackcloth and cry out in mourning. Run about covered with gashes. For your God, Milcom, will go into exile, along with his priests and officials. Why do you brag about your great power? Your power is ebbing away, you rebellious people of Ammon. Who trust in your riches and say who would dare to attack us? I will bring terror on you from every side, says the Lord God, who rules over all. You will be scattered in every direction. No one will gather the fugitives back together. Yet in days to come I will reverse Ammon's ill fortune, says the Lord. The Lord who rules over all spoke about Edom. Is wisdom no longer to be found in Teman? Can Edom's counselors not give her any good advice? Has all of their wisdom turned bad? Turn and flee, take up refuge in remote places, you people who live in Dedan. For I will bring disaster on the descendants of Esau. I have decided it is time for me to punish them. If grape pickers came to pick your grapes, would they not leave a few grapes behind? If robbers came at night, would they not pillage only what they needed? But I will strip everything away from Esau's descendants. I will uncover their hiding places so they cannot hide. Their children, relatives, and neighbors will all be destroyed. Not one of them will be left. Leave your orphans behind, and I will keep them alive. Your widows, too, can depend on me. For the Lord says, if even those who did not deserve to drink from the cup of my wrath must drink from it, do you think you will go unpunished? You will not go unpunished, but must certainly drink from the cup of my wrath. For I solemnly swear, says the Lord, that Basra will become a pile of ruins. It will become an object of horror and ridicule, an example to be used in curses. All the towns around it will lie in ruins forever. I said, I have heard a message from the Lord. A messenger has been sent among the nations to say, Gather your armies and march out against her. Prepare to do battle with her. The Lord says to Edom, I will certainly make you small among nations. I will make you despised by all humankind. The terror you inspire in others and the arrogance of your heart have deceived you. You may make your home in the clefts of the rocks. You may occupy the highest places in the hills, but even if you made your home where the eagles nest, I would bring you down from there, says the Lord. Edom will become an object of horror. All who pass by it will be filled with horror. They will hiss out their scorn because of all the disasters that have happened to it. Edom will be destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah and the towns that were around them. No one will live there. No human being will settle in it, says the Lord. A lion coming up from the thick undergrowth along the Jordan scatters the sheep in the pasture land around it. So too I will chase the Edomites off their land. Then I will appoint over it whomever I choose. For there is no one like me, and there is no one who can call me to account. There is no ruler who can stand up against me. So listen to what I, the Lord, have planned against Edom, what I intend to do to the people who live in Teman. Their little ones will be dragged off. I will completely destroy their land because of what they have done. The people of the earth will quake when they hear of their downfall. Their cries of anguish will be heard all the way to the Gulf of Aquaba. Look, 
Like an eagle with outspread wings, a nation will soar up and swoop down on Basra. At that time, the soldiers of Edom will be as fearful as a woman in labor. The Lord spoke about Damascus. The people of Hamath and Arpad will be dismayed because they have heard bad news. Their courage will melt away because of worry. Their hearts will not be able to rest. The people of Damascus will lose heart and turn to flee. Panic will grip them. Pain and anguish will seize them like a woman in labor. How deserted will that once famous city be, that city that was once filled with joy. For her young men will fall in her city squares. All her soldiers will be destroyed at that time, says the Lord who rules over all. I will set fires to the walls of Damascus. It will burn up the palaces of Ben-Hadad. The Lord spoke about Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazor that King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered. Army of Babylon, go and attack Kedar. Lay waste those who live in the eastern desert. Their tents and their flocks will be taken away. Their tent curtains, equipment, and camels will be carried off. People will shout to them, Terror is all around you. The Lord says, Flee quickly, you who live in Hazor. Take up refuge in remote places. For King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has laid out plans to attack you. He has formed his strategy on how to defeat you. The Lord says, Army of Babylon, go and attack a nation that lives in peace and security. They have no gates or walls to protect them. They live all alone. Their camels will be taken as plunder. Their vast herds will be taken as spoil. I will scatter to the four winds those desert people who cut their hair short at the temples. I will bring disaster against them from every direction, says the Lord. Hazor will become a permanent wasteland, a place where only jackals live. No one will live there. No human being will settle in it. Early in the reign of King Zedekiah of Judah, the Lord spoke to the prophet Jeremiah about Elam. The Lord who rules over all said, I will kill all the archers of Elam, who are the chief source of her military might. I will cause enemies to blow through Elam from every direction, like the winds blowing in from the four quarters of heaven. I will scatter the people of Elam to the four winds. There will not be any nation where the refugees of Elam will not go. I will make the people of Elam terrified of their enemies, who are seeking to kill them. I will vent my fierce anger and bring disaster upon them, says the Lord. I will send armies chasing after them until I have completely destroyed them. I will establish my sovereignty over Elam. I will destroy their king and their leaders, says the Lord. Yet in days to come, I will reverse Elam's ill fortune, says the Lord. God, a lot of times I think that we are like these these nations. They thought that they could have the things of the world and it would insulate them or protect them in various situations including specifically uh, the wars that were happening and were about to happen uh, because of your command you know Moab thought that they were safe uh, and they weren't Ammon thought that uh, because they were so wealthy and they were probably using that money to pay tributes to bigger nations um, to protect them they thought that they were fine uh, Edom was in a uh, area that was very uh, mountainous so it would have been hard to get to and the walls around Edom were uh, very fortified so they felt very safe because of the place they lived the housing units that they lived and I think about our world and how we try and insulate ourselves against things um, if we have a lot of wealth uh, then many people believe that they're going to heaven because they have money and they can buy the best seats in the churches and they can give the most money but you're really clear in the bible that that's not the case and some people live in big houses that makes them feel safe from this world but you're pretty clear in the bible that that's not going to protect them i don't i don't know why god why we don't get that the things of this world were all created by you 
and you are in control over all of those things. And yet we're more fearful of the things of this world than we are of you. We use the things of this world to insulate us from you. Uh, I think sometimes to perhaps give us excuses to not just live our lives fully for you. That money, wealth, titles, uh, cars, jobs, relationships, houses, all of these things uh, seem to put a distance between you and us. And for many people, that's intentional because while they're here on earth, it's what they believe in. Uh, while they're here on earth, they're going to be as comfortable as possible. So comfort becomes their idol. I think comfort becomes a lot of our idol <laughs> in the process. And it insulates us against your wrath. Now, that's an illusion because if you read the Bible, we know that that's not true. But we can see even back in the Old Testament where they were doing it with money and buildings, trying to insulate themselves. And, and you said, I'm so sorry, you can do whatever you think you need to, but I am still going to reign sovereign. My anger, my discipline is still going to terrify you. I am going to overwhelm you with <laughs> what I'm about to do because I am the one in charge. And you do that in our own lives too, uh, whether that be taking money away, taking houses away, taking relationships away. There's all sorts of different ways, at least in my life, that you have brought my attention into focus of who is really in charge, that the things of this world definitely aren't that. God, allow our hearts today to understand that you reign sovereign over everything in the world, our emotions, our things our desires all of those were created by you uh, so of course you have full sovereignty over all of those things and at any given time you can give them to us and at any given time you can take them away from us and it's only through obedience and humbleness are we ever in a place where you want us to be instead of where we desire to be because of what the world shows us God, allow us to understand that there is nothing, nothing at all that we can do or say or think or acquire that can separate us from you. For good or for bad, there's nothing that can separate us from you. You can see everything that we do, every thought that we have, um, every action we take, every word that we speak. God, your sovereignty in my life is something that I crave. I still don't have the process down. I still seem to choose my selfish will over yours, but I am so thankful that I serve a God that is so big that I can't even imagine, so in control I can't even imagine, uh, and loves me that big as well. In your son's name I pray, amen.